There are a lot of differences between indie games and AAA titles. Too many, in fact, for me to reasonably compose into a single video. So for this one, I will try to go over how the developers of Celeste and Baba Is You use focused game design in order to create titles that are comparable and to some people better than a lot of AAA titles out on the market. AAA games are more often than not very ambitious projects. That ambition might manifest itself in different ways. Some might place their focus on their world or story, while others try to create an experience that is as close to reality as possible. In order to have a chance of reaching those ambitions, many people have to work very hard for a long time. Which of course means that the projects end up costing a lot of money. And with money going out, there are more than likely hopes of larger sums coming in. Back when I first started playing games, there were limited ways of making money on the games themselves. Those included selling the game, and that was about it. Expansions would happen to some games, but generally, if you wanted to make money, the game had to sell or you would need to sell merch related to the title. Today, there are more ways to make money on games. Expansions have generally been cut out for their Zoomer Cousin DLC, and while creating merch outside of the game world will always be popular, we also have gotten to a point where we purchase merch inside the games as well, by the method of microtransactions. But for any of these methods to make any money, they all require a user base. Acquiring that user base is done by making a game that people want to play, or when talking about projects as big as AAA titles, a lot of people want to play. Creating something that runs the risk of alienating people is going to be scary, since a lot of jobs can be at play with any given title. There's of course space for titles to seem somewhat niche while turning out to appeal to a lot of people, as FromSoft has managed to prove. But a more common way of facing this issue is to create a game that has something for everybody. This is achieved by putting in a lot of features so people can end up playing the game they want to play. A good example of this is Red Dead Redemption 2. I played it as a movie where I followed the story and did little else outside of it, while others played it as a cowboy role-playing game and the really hardcore finally got the fishing game they've been dreaming about. Large companies have been competing for large user bases for a long time, and as such AAA titles are becoming more and more complex, to the point where a lot of titles that once would have been considered to be full of things to do, can get the critique of not having enough content. But the landscape looks quite different for indie titles. The first and most notable difference being the amount of people that work on them. The natural logic following this is the fact that they cost a lot less to develop, and therefore need to sell a lot less in order to still turn a profit. Not having to cater to many different types of people means that the games don't have to have as much variety in what they do. It would be disingenuous of me to present indie development as subtractive, when in reality they can be as ambitious, if not more so, than AAA titles. But because of the smaller amount of manpower, going wide in amount of features isn't really a valid use of the time. But going deep in the game's core makes much more sense. From here on out, I will be showing some gameplay that could be considered spoilers by some. Although I will stick to only showing gameplay and will for the most part stick to early parts of each game. In the event that you really enjoy platformers, then I'd highly recommend Celeste, and the same goes for Puzzlers and Baba Is You. I would be very surprised if you liked their respective genre and didn't end up liking them, so you might want to save the experience for yourself. The reason I'm bringing both of these titles into the same video is partially due to the fact that I recently played through both of them, but also because they both have a similar progression structure, which showcases how focus on a specific piece of design can bring more depth into a game. Structurally, Celeste has you moving from one level to the next, where each level introduces some unique new mechanics. Each level is divided up into a certain amount of challenges that you will have to jump your way through, and upon completion you are given a checkpoint making sure that unless you are actively choosing to go backwards you won't have to do the same challenge. The mechanics that were introduced in the level become more and more complex as you make your way towards the end and start getting mixed in with the other mechanics in order to make sure that the player proves their worth. And instead of being repetitive and going through Baba Is You's progression, I'm just going to say that it's pretty much the same thing outside of having more freedom in what order you take on the different levels and challenges. What's impressive about the progression of both games is how it all ties back into the core of each game. Every new mechanic is created as a way to expand on how you can maneuver while platforming or in what ways you can continue to change the rules. While this focus on core mechanics might alienate a good amount of players, it also leads to the people who like the genres to dig deep. 
And not only that, but it allows the developers to have a certain level of expectation of the players. A person that ends up playing games like these are more than likely people who enjoy the genres. And assuming that the player enjoys that type of game will most likely mean that they have a certain level of competency in the genre as well. Because of this, these games don't mess around. The games don't take too long until they start placing some pretty tough challenges on you. My 1600 deaths in Celeste speak to that, and I don't even want to count the amount of times that I've started to question my own intelligence while playing Baba is You. The difficulty is in some sense a sign of respect between player and developer. As the players are seen as good enough to get tested, and the developers being free to stretch their fingers and seeing how far they can take their systems knowing that there will be someone to take on the challenge. But the introduction of new mechanics and expanding on what is there is only as effective as it is because of how good the base is. With every game there is a question of game feel. Having good game feel depends on what type of game it is as well as what the intent is. For instance, Red Dead Redemption 2 was by many considered to have bad game feel because of how heavy the main character felt when doing pretty much anything. That opinion comes from a place of wanting fast responsive controls. But if you look at it from the perspective of making the character feel like they are part of the realistic world that they are placed in, then it might be viewed as good game feel. Having good game feel is not as simple as black and white, and will vary depending on what the intent is. When looking at both Celeste and Baba as you, I'd argue that they have both managed to capture good game feel, while at the same time managing to be very different from one another. This being because of some very smart tricks that the games do behind the scenes that you might not think about, but you definitely feel. Baba is You is set on a grid where an input in one direction will move you one unit in that direction. It might seem like it's mapped one to one with the player's inputs, but at a closer look we can see that there are some tricks there to make the game playable. After all, if it were mapped one to one, then holding an input in one direction would move you in that direction with every passing frame. This would make the game unplayable, as you'd need frame-perfect inputs in order to position yourself in front of something you want to manipulate. The game reads your inputs at set intervals instead, which helps you know when to stop. But the game goes even further than that. If the player resets their input to neutral between inputs, the game doesn't lock you into the intervals. The fact that you manage to move back to neutral and then pressing again is a way for you to tell the game that you know what you're doing, and that it shouldn't be holding your hand. The game has been created with enough foresight to let you roam free in these moments rather than holding you back like an overprotective parent that has no faith in their kids' abilities. Celeste is more freeform in its movement, which makes it a lot more difficult to analyze, but thankfully the director of the game has given a few examples of what they do in order to give Celeste its feel. Some of the examples given being Coyote Time, which gives you a window of time after falling off a ledge where you can still jump, Jump Buffering, where you can input and hold your next jump before you've landed and have the game counted as a jump rather than a missed input, Corner Correction, where the game nudges you to the sides when hitting the edge of a corner to not have you bonk all the time, and many many more techniques. The director, Matt Thorson, has made a beautiful breakdown of some of the tricks they use in the Twitter thread that I will be linking in the description. These types of game field tidbits are not exclusive to indie games, and are used in pretty much any game. Managing to either find or figure out these tricks while also implementing them means that the people making it have a good understanding of the nitty gritty details of each system. And in the case of AAA titles, it's easy to see that polish on this level might not be applied to all of the different features in a game, as the greater whole can take priority over the fine tuned details. But when a developer places their focus on the details in their core and makes sure that everything in the game ties back into itself, the results can lead to an experience which sets the bar for games in the genre. Keeping the focus on the core leads to a certain level of clarity and can be a valuable tool when trying to get something done. This goes outside of game development as well and into all of our lives. Every day that we get up, we tend to have an idea of stuff that we want to do during the day. Oftentimes we set high expectations on ourselves and want to do a lot of different things. But at least in my case, I catch myself more often than I'd like to admit with not doing any of it. The volume of work and having to switch between different things can seem daunting and procrastination has a way of creeping up on you. The writing of this script, for example, got postponed multiple times until the day that I decided to only focus on finishing it. The amount of dishes in my sink might be screaming at me as I'm writing this, but focusing on the task at hand leads not only to finishing it, but also to a better result than if my focus was split to other things at the same time. 
So if you ever catch yourself feeling down because of all the things that didn't get done, then maybe it's a matter of trying to juggle too many things instead of making sure that one thing is kept in the air. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and learn from these games that it's okay not to do everything and that not trying to do everything might even make you better off in the end. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then you can let me know by subscribing to the channel, liking the video and leaving a comment. If you didn't, then feel free to let me know in the comments what you didn't like as it might be something that I can improve on in future videos. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter at budding underscore basil. Thank you. Have a great day.